G'day fans and we're back talking about The Mandalorian episode two of the season two. How good is that? Last week it's The Marshal, today it's The Passenger. Very exciting stuff and oh, it's uh, Dags and MPS here with you to talk about the episode. MPS, MPS, just very quickly, what did you think of The Passenger? Well, I, I thought The Passenger was a little different because I wanted to hear him yell out, Marshal, <laughs> and get a battery for the, for the Razor back because... You know, that thing's been bumped and grinded and, and it's... It's actually the Razor damaged. Crest, not the Razorback. Razor Razorback was the name Razor of the pick Razor from Razor. the movie. But I've been up all night watching the episode over and over and over again, so <laughs> I'm a little bit weary. Very good. Well, I like the idea that we still uh, start off on Tatooine, you know, so Din, I'm going to start calling him Din. I'm sick of the Mandalorian, right, because I'm going to go with Din now. Um, so he's on his bike, he's herbing along, and you've got the dudes hold up a rope, right? No laser beams in this show. They just use a good old-fashioned <laughs> rope. Uh, and I thought that was actually quite good. And I thought, depending on where it hits him, it's going to cut his head off and it'll be like, that's the end of the show. That's it. And we're done and dusted. But he gets off and, of course, you know, the dudes try and steal the kid as per the usual. It's good to see that the kid is still, like, being wanted and hunted down, which I thought was kind of, kind of cool. But uh, naturally, good old Din saves the day once again and yeah, the bad dudes are no match for him. I found that that scene... And look, again, the, the Mandalorian has become, in certain parts, predictable. Yes. And we'll get on to some of those later on. But it was interesting to see that he gets hit by the rope, but he doesn't crash himself. He actually flips around and uses the rocket pack to actually land, which is actually quite ingenious. Yeah, a little bit too good in my view. I thought it was so funny when the dude steals the rocket pack and runs off. Yeah. You would think it's like taking a video cassette recorder. <laughs> for those who remember those or a DVD player, you go, okay, so where's the controls for this thing? And of course, it's on his arm the whole time. <laughs> and it's like, how can you not think of that? He just run off of the pack and go, uh, yeah, the dude's still in control of it. And the way that was done, it was very, very cute, I've got to say. But uh, yeah, it was funny. Again, that was part of the predictability. You know, you go, oh, take the rocket pack. You could have anything, have anything but take the rocket pack. Uh, wait yep. for it. Three, yep. two, one. Whoosh. Yep. Yeah. Boom. Okay, uh, that's it. We, we yep. figured out that. Yeah, exactly right. So, and I like he's got the, the the stick across the back, and he's carrying absolutely everything. Not a drop of sweat. Not like any struggle whatsoever. He's doing a whole he's all Lawrence of Arabia thing through the desert, right? And I thought, oh, by the time he gets the moss isolate, he should be going water, water, but nah, not a, not nothing. Just wanders no. in like it's no big deal whatsoever. It's a hundred thousand degrees out there, but he's cool because he's the din. He, he hasn't eaten. He hasn't drunk. He hasn't fed the baby. Um, and look, the other thing too about that little scene, and I do love the child's reactions to certain things and a couple of yeah. cute ones here is when the he's walking with the the child and the after he you know does the rocket pack thing with that that dude um the child looks at him like really did you have to do that and it's like yeah why not you know of course that's that's, that's yeah, well, the way like the last episode the child got stacks of screen time we'll discuss this a bit later on and it's like they've obviously said now chuck it in the kid you know we didn't enough for kids the first episode you need to have a kiddo meter how many how many minutes of screen time does a kid have <laughs> Um, so we get into oh, Moss Eisley, which I thought, excuse me, was very good. Staying in the cantina, off to see Pally Moto again, who I believe is sitting in Han Elcove from A New Hope. I thought that was actually very, very cool, and even including his seat as well. Um, she's playing Sabak against Dr. Mandible. Mandible, the insect now has a name. Uh, and she calls out an idiot array. And of course, that is a really nice link back to Rebels because uh, in Sabak, you have what they call an idiot's array, which makes you win the game. It wasn't mentioned in the solo movie, but it was mentioned in Rebels, and I personally had a bit of a, oh, look at how good is that? So that was a nice little moment. So uh, there you go. And in the background, if you notice who's serving the bar is an EV-9D9 droid, and I thought, oh, maybe it's another model, not exactly the same one, but apparently it's exactly the same one from Jabba's Palace, EV-9D9. Funny that droids are now serving in the bar where once upon a time they weren't allowed in the bar at all. So that's yeah. actually how times have changed. So there you go. Yes. <laughs> Well, that's only been in the show's yeah, history. Five years. That's only a, a, no a ten year timeline because oh, remember yeah. when they walked into into the canteen in, the, in a new hope yeah, that yeah. was about ten years ago. So yeah, the times they are a, a, a droiding, if you like, I guess. Yeah. I did like how they used they had the cray dragon meat and they used the rocket to heat it up. I mean, that was that, yeah. that was a funny moment, you know. And it was like okay, yeah. it sort of links one episode to the next episode. So he's got to bring you slab of meat because you actually asked for it. And they're using the yeah. rocket to heat it up. That was very, very cool. Yeah, Tatooine barbecue. So you're going to be seeing all these people now who are who are making rocket um, engine type barbecue, so they could just cook their meat, yeah. and that'll be the new thing for for Halloween and and you know Star Wars parties. So the old saga rears its ugly head. Oh, the prawl din's looking for Mandalorians. Can't find them anywhere. And says, "Well, you didn't find them over here. Let's go and find them over there." But before you do that, you're going to take this frog chick. 
to her planet, good old Trask. And it's just like, and he, I like the line he says, he's not a taxi. I thought that was actually kind of funny. Um, but uh, you got the frog species that he can't understand. I thought that was cool, you know, so you have the communication issue between the two of them. Uh, and it was like, okay, we're off on tangents. <laughs> Oh, poor bastard. <laughs> on tangents yet again. <laughs> um, and that then brings in the X-Wings for the New Republic. And um, you know, good old Dave Filoni sticking his beak in once more, like getting his bit of screen time as an X-Wing pilot. And we did predict correctly from the trailer, they are definitely New Republic X-Wings, enough that that was actually quite good. And it was a really good sequence, actually. The chase sequence and all the rest of it with them was mm. uh, in Through the Ice Planet, whatever. It was really well done. I was going to say, I noticed that, you know, when they're chasing him, they... It all seemed nice at the beginning. They come up to him and they say, "Oh, you know, you haven't put your your um your beacon on and all that, yep. your beacon on and all that sort of stuff." And he goes, "Oh, I haven't got it." So he's trying to talk his way out of it. And they go, "Well, we'll have to sort of, you know, get you out of here, and you can't do this." And he's like, "Well, all right. Oh, look, I found it all of a sudden. You know, yeah. he just flips the switch. He's trying to, not to deal with these guys. And the whole fact that he's got to go at sublight speed rather than yeah. um, hyper, hyperspace because of the eggs not fertilizing. Mind you, by this time, the kid's already eaten one. <laughs> you know, you would think that she's sitting there going, well, I had 26 of these things. Now I've got 25. What happened? Actually, it gets know, worse than so, that because by the end of the show, she's lost about five of the damn things. You reckon she'll be going, oi, what's the deal with that? <laughs> Where are they just vanished in the thin air? Um, I thought it was interesting that the X-Wing pilots and even um, Din says, you know, may the force be with you. And, of course, yeah. from his perspective, and even from their perspective, they have no idea what the force is. It's just the saying. It's probably the equivalent of us saying, uh, see you later. But to say, may the force be with you. And, of course, he's actually seen the force in action with the child in the last yeah. season, but he didn't even know what it was. I thought that was actually quite interesting. So it's like, oh, it's just a phrase that's been handed down over the generations, but we don't know what it means. Uh, I yeah. thought that was actually quite interesting because from the audience's point of view, oh, yeah, sounds grouse, but from the yeah, I know, And it's, it's, it's the first time they reference the actual full quote but yeah you're right it was like it was almost like hey have a nice day guys you know may the force be with you and and with you too and it's like hang on you guys don't even know and again you don't know what you're talking about which is otherwise you would say well hang on that's a that's a jedi mm -hmm. saying the jedi haven't existed why are we saying this yeah and, and it's just it's just sort of like carried on through and i can understand from the new republic guy saying it but from din knowing it uh yeah, yeah it's i was hoping he would say to the kid afterwards i have no idea what that means and of course the kid knows all about it uh, and ironically in this particular episode the kid could have used the force in all sorts of places to save the day and didn't at, at any point mm. so he didn't even get to see the force in action which i thought was kind of funny so uh, yeah but it was nice to see that the x-wings even though they chase him they lost him mm -hmm. you know he could still outmaneuver them without speed and without being you know he was just tricky um and being in the caves obviously it was yeah harder to get a, a radar sort of on him but you know and then he slides it in and then all of a sudden he falls through the ice like what are the chances see the irony is of course typically in these sort of shows din who is our good guy gets chased by the bad guys but in this case he's actually the good guy being chased by the other good guys <laughs> so it's not like he can blow up the new republic x-wings because like hey they're the good guys you can't blow them up you know blow up the uh, the the first order and all those guys no problem whatsoever in the empire but uh, yeah, it's sort of almost like, uh, yeah, how, how do we deal with this? So you yeah, have him escape and then crash the ship. And then there's a whole nother saga of like, oh, okay, we're stuck on the thing. How do we get off? Oh, we're broken down. Got to get the eggs to the planet. Oh my God, it's a saga. It's, a, it's, it's never ending troubles. Uh, and a lot of people, and including myself, was hoping that the planet they crashed on was Ilum. And I don't believe that to be the case at all. It certainly hasn't been identified that. And of course, Ilum is from the Clone Wars where they discovered the crystals for the lightsabers, but it wasn't to be. So uh, we're just on some unnamed planet with some unnamed frog person. So there you go. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you he's not going to do the repairs straight away because it's getting colder. And then she decides that she needs a bath. So she goes finds this blue, blue pond like they did in Discovery. So it's like, hang on. With, I, I got to say, there's got to be some sort of conspiracy where someone knows something from each show and he's chucking it on. And that's why Mandalorian's been two weeks behind because they're trying to match mm. up all these weird things. So we'll see what happens next week, what corresponds between both shows. So do you like the fact that the frog chick, I oh, shouldn't call it that, it's the frog, frog. Well, they call it a frog. It's actually quite a derogatory uh, term when you think about it. But anyway, uh, I, yeah, like he says, he doesn't speak frog. And I thought, I don't understand frog. That's yeah, hysterical. It's like, yeah, right. It's, um, yeah. So <laughs> she connects up to the Q90's helmet and gives him the guilt trip. You know, it's like the last of my species, this, that. The problem I found is that we've never seen the species before, the frog people. And we're just getting her side of the story. And it's completely impossible to feel empathic towards her. 
Mm. Because you can say, I've got nothing to relate to. I've never seen you before. I don't know anything about you. Uh, it's not like you existed in the universe, in the Star Wars universe and other shows and movies and TV series. So it's just like, well, really, who cares? I mean, he doesn't care. So why should we as the audience care? And even mm. though she's stressing out and she's got him in the pool and all the rest of it, it kind of feels a bit flat in that regard because it's like, by and large, you really don't really sort of, you're not invested in, in what happens. Yeah. And, uh, that's probably one of the downsides of the entire show. It should have been a, a maybe two-part episode where he gets her halfway through the episode, not towards the start. And the journey is just long and, and arduous for some reason. Something else happens. And then, you know, because it, all of a sudden it went to be a race against the clock just to get off the planet, yep. you know. So they get into the into the tunnels and all of a sudden the child sees something else to eat because he's had enough of frog eggs. And you go hang on, these things look suspiciously like alien eggs and then they peel open exactly like an alien egg and you go, oh, no, And even guys. the little spider looked like a face hugger. You know, yeah, and I no, thought it just needs to go... <laughs> it's like... And then the episode got both interesting and scary at the same time because I'm not a fan of spiders and you got all these little ones and then they got bigger and bigger and bigger. The fact that it was gross that the child was eating all these spiders, I think he had like two or three before they all sort of woke up and then the child realized, Oh crap, we're in trouble now. And uh, he, the, the running that he did, that little bit of run that you could see was very, very cute. Yeah. That was the thing. The child got a lot of really good screen time. And of course it's eating the eggs, you know, you, it's, it's kind of funny. You sort of think you just want to do the old, you know, like Sylvester the cat, you know, bad, bad, bad and get the Tweety bird out. But you know, that's how it sort of felt. But of course it's just so cute. You go, you know, have a few more, whatever it is. And of course, clearly that kid's got a big appetite, you know, just munching on these eggs and says, Oh, I'll just ch chat out on a face hugger or two. And, uh, and of course, uh, and of course it doesn't use the force to save the day, even though the thing's like, yeah, it's on, it's on his head and everything. That was, yeah, you've got to <laughs> laugh, you know. It's, it's very, very cute. Um, I thought as soon as the big spider turned up, the, the, the mother or the granddaddy of them all, it reminded me of Shelob from Lord of the Rings, for those who remember the Lord of the Rings series, yeah. just bigger. Yeah, you know, they just get bigger and bigger as they go along. Um, and I thought, you know, get to see the frog mother sort of running on all fours, which I thought was uh, kind of cool. And you must admit, when they were inside the Razor Crest, inside the bridge, and, like, like they're stuck in there, you were thinking, I was thinking, how yeah, are they going to get out of this <laughs> <laughs> that's a cliffhanger ending right there. How are they going to get yeah. out of this one? And uh, and of course, yeah, it was the X Wing guys who saved the day, as is the case. Well, it was it was funny because the two the two big feet of the I think it's a second spider go through the the windscreen, mm. and you go, that's pretty damn impressive. And you kind of screwed there, Mando. You're sort of sitting there, and you're going to get more than a ding on your helmet this time. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this red laser fire comes along, and you go, all right. So the X Wings have come down. Next thing you know, it's not just them. It, they're sharpshooting these things. Yeah. And they're sharpshooting all the small ones as well. It's not yeah. like they're missing. Imagine, a, you know, a couple of stormtroopers there. They'd be like, you know, spider, shot, shot, yeah. shot, yeah. shot, <laughs> shot, shot. But these guys were sharpshooters to the max. They were nailing every yeah. single one of them, every single shot. So uh, I thought that was impressive. Yeah, it was a little bit of a get out of jail free card uh, moment, wasn't it? And of course, it all happens outside the ship. So the, the, the production company saved a hell of a lot of money not having to show any of this stuff happening. They're just seeing all the red flashes from outside. And you go, oh, okay, I wonder who's out there saving the day. Oh, look, it's the X Wing guys. What are the chances of that? We didn't hear them land or anything, but hey, there they are. How good is that? Um, and I thought the fan that, bit that I found funny is like, okay, they've, they've turned up and Din is having a chat to them saying, hey, can you help me out here? I need to get my ship fixed. And the guys say, no, nah, you're on your own now. We're just going to nick off and go, what was the point of that? It's like, either if you just help the dude, then why don't you go the extra mile and sort of like, yeah, we'll fix you up. And then you come back to you know, come back to the local uh, law enforcement office with us. But instead, they've just said, no, nah, you're on your own and, and just nick off. And I just, that was a bit bit of a cop out. I thought it's like, oh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of thought that they could have helped him out a bit to sort of, you know, stay around in case, you know, the ship didn't take off because he still took time to, yeah. Like that wasn't just one cave of spiders. That the whole planet's yeah. probably got thousands of them, so that you would have hung around. Uh, and you're right, you didn't see them coming at all because when they take off and go away, their their front headlights are on. Mm. You see them fly yeah. off, and you go, you should have seen something to give you yeah. an indicator. They didn't just stealthily, you know, land and all of a sudden just take on all these spiders. Yeah, it was a bit, uh, a little bit too convenient, and um, the timing was um, quite good. And of course, when the spider's on top of the ship, that's from a, like old classic science fiction movies. Out there. Oh, we're trying to take off, and there's a big alien on top of us. Oh my god, how are we going to get out of this? So, uh, yeah, very, very, very cool. But uh, 
There you go. That was um, yeah, good stuff. And, of course, he's probably shipped the Razor Crest. is looking a bit busted up as it limps over to Trask, where it's got to go to drop the, uh, the frog off. So I reckon that'll continue on to the start of the next episode. So uh, there you go. What do you yeah. reckon? I, I did like the fact that as he tries to take off, the actual the legs of the spider yeah. are falling it's off. Solid. And I reckon yeah. that... I don't think that was a visual effect. I think that was a physical effect yeah. because it didn't. It moved exactly how it should have. So maybe there was there was models in that one, and that was very good. You know, yeah. I did think that was very very clever. Yeah, exactly right. So there you go. So any final thoughts before we rate? Do we have to rate the episode out of five helmets? So uh, what do you got for us, MPS? I love the fact that um, the child pushes his face up against the the jar with the eggs in it at one point, and he squishes his little nose. Oh, uh, it was. It was a 10 plus on the cute factor for the whole episode. Um, other than that, I would give that episode, believe it or not, even though I don't speak frog, uh, a 4.5 helmets. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Take that. <laughs> Jeez, we have got a serious disconnect between you and me, I tell you what. So, oh, four and a I, half. I, you say so you I actually it rated it half. better than last week's episode. Yeah, well, this, this had a bit more... The spiders, because I don't like spiders and all that sort of stuff, had me on the edge of the seat going, how are they going to get out of this? You know, what's actually going to happen? And do they kill them all? Because the the intensity of the fact that they got into the ship, you know, because there was no door, and then they're getting into the to the cockpit and all that sort of stuff, it just gave you a bit more, oh, crap, this could get ugly. So that's why I gave it a four and a half. Wow. Very good. Well, I'm the opposite. I struggled. And I will use the word struggle to give it two and a half. Uh, and the reason was Ooh. that to me, it was just another monster of the week episode. Uh, I found it was just filler. And because there's only eight episodes in the season, we really need this story to move along. Now, some fans have suggested that it's actually uh, the middle part of a three part act and there's like, it's going to build up and there's like something really, really exciting. And I get that. But when your episodes are um, like, people are hanging out for them you can't just have fluff for the sake of having fluff they've got to have meaning they've got to advance the story they've got to have a real purpose not just be a stepping stone to the next episode mm. uh so i was watching it and i was thinking it's not working for me i saw monsters last week i'm seeing monsters this week and sure there was a few moments and of course the kid it's looking as cute as ever but that's intentional because he wasn't around much last time uh and and as i said i had no emotional investment whatsoever in the frog and uh yeah it didn't work for me at all so i struggled get it to two and a half and i know it's caused a bit of division in the fan ranks some people have said oh they loved it some people said nah they didn't like it at all but uh yeah clearly between the two of us we have uh, different opinions which is what it's all about which is very very cool there you go and as, as you said with the the fact that it should advance the story it's gone straight from last week's episode so essentially it's the next day yep. you know all the same day and then same day. if it's a three-part mm -hmm. arc then the next episode will be the next day when he lands and gets his ship prepared and there'll yep. be some issue on that planet and then he'll have to fix that before he can move on and yep. yeah i you're right eight episodes we should be seeing you know a couple of weeks of of tra travel between each episode if you yeah, will yeah very good stuff all right well we actually have to wrap this episode up but don't panic fans because mandalorian is back in a few days time as will we be so how good is that so in the interim, make sure you, the force is definitely with you and uh, make sure you keep on warsing on. That's the best thing I can think of at this stage. So until next week, we'll see you then. Okay, bye for now.